somebody's coming in with a new crop they've never tried before and I'm the landowner and I'm like, I don't know if you can be successful on at this or if everything on the property is going to die because you don't know what you're doing. You could um, rent him the land and not share That's what I was going to say. Can I do a flat fee and say, you know, for the use of the land, you get this amount? Or could I even do for a fee, like um, I get a base fee of this amount no matter what, plus this percentage of the crop if it succeeds? You can do anything you guys agree on. <laughs> as long as it's legal and fits the definition yes okay you could say i will let you till my soil but you are planting marijuana let's say it's legal here let's like california it's medical marijuana well i know that's a very expensive crop i may want a huge portion for that whereas if you were planting soybeans i may decide i want to rent it at 300 dollars an acre and whatever you get about is yours you just pay me rent you can do whatever you want okay but the term sharecropper comes from one person owns it one person works it and they split in some pur purpose now the other one is called rent rent i just rent the land to the farmer he's going to pay me a hundred dollars an acre and Whatever he makes is his. If he makes a whole butt load, he gets a whole butt load. If he has a bad crop, then too bad he still owes me rent. You can do them both. All right. Okay. Thank you. Probably okay. those are still going to go by. And it, if you're buying it to, to rent out, it may be an income property. They may determine the value based on income. If you're buying it to be the farmer, they may base it on sales price because you are the one actually going to be living there and doing it. So quick question, because I thought about, um, you know, when it comes to investing and investing in land. So when you invest in land and you buy a piece of land, um, you can rent that land out basically. Yes. So, but what if somebody wanted to build something on it? So regardless if they build something on it, they will still have to pay me as well? Yes. Or do you have to sell it? Like, okay. Call the land lease. Okay. Very common in the commercial world. You've got the land and you really like the land and you don't want to sell it because it's a very expensive right near the highway here goes the highway right there you don't want to sell it so you may rent it to walmart who builds a building on it and they may own that building but they're still sitting on your land and you sell them you lease them a land and you may make it hey i want ninety thousand dollars a year and I want a 30 year lease with you. That is a land lease, very common in the commercial world. At the end of that 30 year land lease, then it goes away, you keep the building as the owner of the land. And you've collected, uh, what is that? 90,000 times 30 years, 90,000 is 27,000, 30 years. 2.7 million. So yeah, you don't have to sell the land. The problem is the number of people that want to lease from you, it may be reduced because they heard that, hey, she doesn't want to sell the land. She just wants to lease it. Somebody may go, well, I'm out then because I want to own it. Are they in a car or an airplane? <laughs> I hope they're not going to be watching while they're in an airplane. So yeah, you can land lease the property as well. We talked about CMAs. We talked about how it's done. Selecting the comparables, obviously. We talked about adjusting the comparables when one is superior and inferior to the property. All right.
right. So this will be available once we're done, too, by the way. You guys will have access to I'm recording it. And then tonight I will manipulate it and cut out all the interference and stuff like that. So then you will have access to this recording as well. So you can go back and see problems and do stuff. <clears throat> I hope everybody's back. If they are not, I apologize because we've got to make sure we can get all of this. So we are going to start talking about financing. Financing is a huge section. As you can see, it is 8% of the total here. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, I want to do the easy one first. Let's do the uh, loan to value. And we all kind of understand that the ratio of the loan over the value of the property is this thing called loan to value. What's the definition of value? The value has a def definite definition, remember? It's the sales price or the appraised value, whichever is the selling. Lower of the two, right? It's whichever is the, it's the sales price or the appraised value, whichever is the lower of the two. So if you've got $80,000 loan over a $100,000 house or value, that's an 80% loan to value. All right. During that loan to value, if you've got 80%, they really like that. So here's the value, there's the loan. What's the amount of uh, above the loan, but below the value? What's this amount here called? Equity. Equity, it represents the amount of the loan that you have paid off, All right. If you have got 20% equity, and an 80% loan to value, and the value drops a little bit, whose money is getting lost? That's your equity, right? Mm -hmm. The bank really doesn't care much. But if they've got a higher, say 100% loan to value, and they lose value, that's the bank's money, they are going to force you to buy an insurance policy. <laughs> That's where you get private mortgage insurance or PMI. Mm -hmm. Okay. PMI only comes in if you've got a greater than 80% loan to value. And the PMI is prorated. What I mean by that is say you have an 85% loan to value. That is different than if you've got a 95%. Because here they only have to cover 5% of it. Here they got to cover 15%. So the higher you go above 80, the higher your PMI is going to be, right? Now, when the banks, um, when you go to the bank, the bank makes money on these things called loan origination fees. A loan origination fee is expressed as a point. Mm -hmm. A point is 1% of the loan. Mm -hmm. So if I have an 80% loan to value on a $149,000 purchase, and I've got to pay one and a half points, how much is that loan going to cost me? So that's a math problem again. I've got an 80% loan to value on a $149,000 purchase at one and a half points. How much is that loan going to cost me? $1,430. It's not the number I got, so let me oh. make sure I did it correctly. Oh, snap. There's a one point. Did I put in 1.2 points or 1.5? I got this number twice now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I put 1.2 points. My yeah. So 80% of a loan to value, you take the 0.8 times mm -hmm. the 149, 
that's going to give you the loan amount because points are a percentage of the loan, not the sales price. Then you would multiply that by your one and a half points. You get that number. That's how much the loan is going to cost you. You guys want to do another one? Yep. All right. Let's do one more. We have a $190,000 purchase price and a 75% loan to value and it's going to cost half a discount point and half a loan origination point. So my question to you is, how much, how many dollars does the buyer bring to the closing table? How much does he have to bring to closing? One half loan origination fee, one half discount point. 1,330. So we have answer A of 1,330. Let's see if someone else gets a, another number. Hmm. I definitely got a different number. Oh, 49,400. Did anybody get either one of these two numbers? Well, it's a little bit of a trick question. I tried to do it to you again. I actually got that number. The question I ask you is how much money do they have to bring to the table? I did not ask you how much the loan fee was. Because you still have to bring that 25% down payment plus the fee of the loan. I know that aggravates you, doesn't it? Man, got me good. <laughs> So you are going to take how much is the fee? So take 0.75 times the 190,000 means your loan is actually only 142.5. And your fee is 0.5 plus 0.5. You can actually add those together. Yeah. So you get the 1% for 1425 actually that number is not going to be right there's a better in it at 25 do you multiply the uh one percent to the um 190,000 or what value do you multiply it by no. You multiply the 1% of the loan amount. Okay. The actual answer is this. 48,925. I just went with you and trusted you and see, you burned me. 
So you've got the loan amounts 142.5 times the 0 0.01 is 1425 in fees. And then the 25% down, I asked you that they have to bring is the 47.5. So when you add those together, you get 48,925. That would be the answer on what the buyer needs to bring, which is what I actually ask. Not how much were the fees on this loan. I actually ask how much the buyers need to bring. So the 1% uh, gets multiplied by the 142,000. Yes, it is. A, a point is 1% of the loan. 1% of the loan. So the loan was a 75% loan to value times the 190. Okay, I kind of got lost there for just a second. Where did the 47.5 come from? That's the 20. Yeah, 25% of the purchase. Yeah, that's right. the 25% that you got to bring. Yeah. Because the question was, I asked um, you, how much did the buyer have to bring to closing? If he got a 75% loan to value, that means he's bringing 25% in the equity, right? Gotcha. And that's this number here, the 47.5. Then he has the fee for the loan, which is this number. So I got sneaky and asked you how much did he, if I had to ask you what was the fee for this loan, that's the answer. Gotcha, because I, I was adding the 140, well, I don't know what I was doing now, 142 plus 14. I get it now. Yeah. Oh, so question, so whenever, so let's say if it's 80% loan of value, so then we'll just take the 190,000 times it by 20% and then add the fees. We got an 80% loan to value. How much equity do they have? 20. So yes, at an 80% loan to value, he would have to bring $38,000 in down money, the one other 152,000 is loan, and that is cash that he would have to bring to the table. And then you would figure the one point in this particular case on the loan amount, 1,520 bucks, so he would be bringing the 38 for the down payment and 1520 in fees. So in this particular case, he would have to walk in the door with $39,520. The down payment and the fee for the loan. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Got Interest. It. If I paid $500 in interest this year on my $27,000, $27,000 look, 27.5 loan, how much, what was my interest rate? What was my interest rate? To 5.5%. The trust whoever said that. 500 divided by, that seems like a lot more than 5.5. Maybe not. 1.8%. Yeah. I got 1.8% interest. 
That's because it's accurate. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> So if I got that same interest rate on my home loan of 295,000, how much interest am I paying this year? I, they gave me the same rate because they liked me. So my question is how much interest did I pay on my home loan when I went out and borrowed this for my home? You said in, in one year? Yep. 5,310. You're probably, this is a rounding error. I just left that 0 0.01813 on my calculator. Mm -hmm. So take 295 times 1.8, 5,310. Mm -hmm. That's how much dollars I would pay in interest rate this year. Are we cool with that number? Oh. Um, principal interest taxes and insurance. That's a pity payment. Uh, typically, that is when they're escrowed. To that. That's a pity payment. That stands for taxes and insurance. That is the interest. And the principal, when someone says my payments are escrowed, that means they're paying a pity payment. This money goes into a, a escrow account. This money goes into an escrow account. Now let's talk about interest rate for a second, because there is a couple of problems that deal with how much interest rate. So let me do this here. June, July, August, if I close on the 10th of June and my first house payment is due here, there is a question about accrued interest. The thing you need to understand is that all interest, it works in arrears. So meaning my August house payment is paying the principal and interest for this month but it's covering the insurance or i'm sorry the interest for this month because they pay in arrears so here's the principal portion here's the interest so at the closing table i need to pay this 20 days of interest right there this is a very common question on the exam that deals with accrued interest at the closing table. So my house payment, the PITI, here's the principal portion, but the interest pays a month in advance. So I still have to owe this month, which would be 20 days, 10 to the 30th is 20 days, times whatever my daily interest is. And if we went back to this one here, oh, we erased it already. What was it, 5,310? Yeah, yeah. That was our, uh, divide that by 365 days. Five thousand $14.54. $14.54 a day. Yep. You would then multiply that by the 20 days. $290. This is how much you would see on their closing sheet for accrued interest. It is for the month that does not get covered in the pay. Once again, see how that house payment there pays this month of principal, but it pays last month of interest. 
So let's add this all up and do one problem here. That's good. If I borrowed $290,000 at 6% interest, I closed on June the 9th. My first house payments due August. I've got two questions. What's my annual in, uh, annual interest payment? And the other question is, how much accrued interest did I pay at closing? <clears throat> Being able to do this will get you about four math questions, by the way. Ooh, that's high interest. Yeah. How much annual interest did I pay? Is it 30 days in June? Yeah. Seventeen thousand four hundred. Oh, you're you're right down. Um, that's, yeah, but thank you to make sure I'm doing it right. So, <clears throat> so how much accrued interest did I have at the closing? Ten thousand. Ten thousand one. Hey. Nobody else get that? Yep. Yeah. All right. So if if I paid seventeen thousand four hundred in interest, how much did I pay per day? Forty seven dollars and sixty seven cents. Simply this number divided by 365. All right, so if I pay 47.67 per day, and in June, how many days did I have? 21. 21 days. 21 days. So go back here times 21. Is one thousand and one dollar and basically ten cents of accrued interest in June that I would have to pay at the closing table. I see a lot of deer in the headlight looks. So do you have to so that 47 was just for our knowledge though right so that when you said the two questions that 47 was just kind of part of our math that we were doing so the only answer that we needed was the 17,400 and then the 1,000 the cure that one and that one okay that's making sure to hear, that's the answer to here okay this like you said was only used to help you calculate this same thing with this you needed this date right so you know how many there okay yeah two answers but there's like four steps in there that's okay. why they love this kind of stuff because you actually had to do this math this math this math to get that one answer they want to make sure that they have got you and where they want you any questions about points, loan to values, PMIs? All right, let's talk about a couple different types of loans here. I got a quick First question. One I want to talk about is probably the most common type of loans that you're going to see. Excuse me. 